Dear Mum and Dad, we're having a smashing time here in Southport. There's lots to do, and so far we've had plenty of sunshine. We had a good journey, and we arrived during the early afternoon. There's so much to tell you. This is an advert promoting Southport from the 1970s, a time when the masses used to flock to the seaside resort. But has the tide changed? A recent seaside ranking feature from The Telegraph gave Southport a score of 28 out of 100. Get in! In the words of The Telegraph's very own Chris Moss, This most Victorian of seaside towns took visitors for granted for decades, expecting Lord Street, a boulevard that allegedly inspired those of Paris, to be sufficiently appealing on its own, to evolve without any help, to keep pulling in the crowds. The armpit of an area around the railway station reflects the sorry state of the local economy. The musician sounds very Parisian, but in actual fact we're on Lord Street. Has Southport really gone that far south? Businessman and journalist Blake Maynard seems to think so. It lives off the past, it lives off the old pound. And most shops you see advertised in this town is for care homes. It's only going to get worse. All cities and towns rely on a certain pound. And without a doubt, I'm sure you're aware, and many other people are aware, that Southport does rely on the old pound. When we think of Southport, we think of the glory days. We think of Lord Street and the canvases clean and fresh and its red streets. Those days are truly, truly gone. And Blake isn't alone with those thoughts. I've been talking to people on Southport Beach. There's lots of empty shops, isn't there? The pier's not open, the parks are very neglected. A sensory garden that's for the blind. It's a good job it's for the blind because the plants in it are awful. You walk through the sand dunes and the sand is beautiful, but the beach is rubbish. The decaying Victorian facade, you know, and the kind of, like, it's, it's, I mean, Blackpool, man. I think that's more of a facade. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, this, I think there's slightly less, can I say, slightly le less, less crackheads per square mile, I think, in Southport. But it's not all a damp squib. Andrew Brown is a journalist who grew up in Southport. He is confident that the resort has a bright future ahead. Now, I've never known so much investment coming in at, at one time. You look at the grand at the end of Lord Street, four million pounds already, uh, and they're still developing the, the building. Uh, you look at the Garrick at the other end, the end of Lord Street, that being transformed at the moment. Um, you look at the Southport Cove, uh, that's going to be built on Princess Park, 75 million pound project that's going to bring a new hotel, Ledger's Bar, Tidal Lagoon, really exciting. You look at Pleasureland, all the plans they've got with their, their massive new roller coaster, their dinosaur theme park, the Viking Adventure Golf, which opened last year. Get in there, boys. The Viking Mini Golf really is a wonderful place to go, even if it is £14 a head. Southport is now getting £37.5 million from the government's Towns Fund to help back future projects like the development here at Pleasureland. Over 5 million people visited Southport in 2021, which was 16% up on 2020 and 5.1% higher than in 2019. So clearly, it seems to be doing something right. We've got a lot of things going for it. They have the air shows, don't they? Yeah, the air shows here every year, which is fantastic. Do they have the lights here, don't they? No, they don't. They have uh, fireworks. Fireworks, there. that's what I meant. They have it on the, on the amusement yeah. park. I'm from Birmingham, and when we entered Southport, uh, me and the wife and the rest of the family actually, uh, we commented how nice it looks. Mm. It's, of course, there's a few run down buildings, but you get that in. Anywhere in the Places are what you make it, you know. If, if you go with your family here with people you love, you can have fun at a bus stop. Well, you can't say fairer than that bus stop praise. So I'm wrapping up with a bit of fish and chips at the King's Place on Lord Street, and it's a banger. Southport is not without its fault. But is it the shower of shame that the Telegraph have portrayed? Probably not. There's an undeniable charm, and people are still visiting. Maybe the air of pomposity has taken over with this Telegraph report.